Hi, I'm Paul Wilson, creator of The Body Swing and the director of the Paul Wilson Golf School at Bears Best Las Vegas. In this tip, I'm giving you the secret to getting lag in your golf swing. <laughs> All right, so this is drill number two. All right, so this one is really how I got lag many, many years ago. So this, you're gonna like this tip because this gives you a mental image, all right? So I'm gonna give you the very same mental image that I had, which helped me get lag. All right, hopefully you enjoy this tip. If so, give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel. Hit the little bell so you're notified when I post new tips and tell all your friends about my tips, you know? There are so many people that are trying to get lag in their golf swing. This tip could help them too. So now we're gonna move on to drill number two in this secret to getting lag series. So if you haven't seen the first video, I would suggest going there, starting there, okay? You can find that video right here. Just click on that link up there, watch the first video. First video will take you to the second, which is the first drill. And now we're moving on to the second drill. All right, now this one is more of how I got lag. So when I started golf, I was, I wasn't this young kid, I was 12, 13. So, you know, I needed to work a little bit on lag in my swing. Well, my dad had this book by Henry Cotton, the first golf teacher. Okay, Henry Cotton, my golfing album. So what he did, he went around and on his travels around, you know, his whole career, he had his camera. And this is like a scrapbook of all these different swings and pictures and that sort of thing as he, he was on this, you know, teaching people all over the world. So you can find pictures of Hogan as a youngster in here, Gary Player, you know, youngster, all these different pros and amateurs, and he goes through all of them, okay, all these different pictures. So I'm flipping through this book. I'm gonna show you the picture in a second. So it's towards the back of the book. I see this picture and it says, one of the world's longest hitters. His name back then was Chick Harbert. Okay, so I see this picture and it just registers in my mind. I keep this mental image of this picture. All right, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, if he's one of the longest hitters in the world at that time, and he has this position in his swing, I should probably have that position too. So that's what I thought of. All right, so let's take a look at the picture that I saw a long, long time ago. All right, so you see that incredible lag angle. Like I said, this was one of the world's longest hitters. So that's what this tip is about. It's going from a fully hinged position at the top, then, it's bringing or compressing this lag angle right here, your maximum, uh, sorry, your maximum wrist angle and maintaining that down to the back leg. All right, so what I'm trying to do is keep that position or mental image that I saw in the book and try to replicate that in my swing. All right, so that's what this drill is about, okay? We're going to the top, and you might have heard this before, but I'm now giving you a mental image to go along with this. There is a third drill that we will do in another tip, okay? But for right now, I want you setting your maximum hinge angle, keeping that compression in your weaker wrist joint, and bringing it down like this so the club is basically in this position, the same position that was in that book. All right, and you have that mental image in your mind. You're trying to replicate it over and over and over. So that is how I got lag many, many years ago. I saw the picture, all right? And then what I would do with my sand wedge. So I used to hit a lot of, um, pitching wedge shots and sand wedge shots, full shots in our short game area. So I would do full swings 
and then all the golf balls were all over the place. So I had to go pick them up. So I would take the shag bag and I'd put it in the middle of the balls and then I would literally sit there and pitch the balls to the shag bag. But every time I did the pitch shot, I would think of that pitcher. So I'd go like this, you know, like, and keep in mind, these are 10, 10 yard shots, 20 yard shots, 30, maybe 40. These are little pitch shots. Okay, that's the main time or main area I practiced this lag drill. So I went like this, I'd go like this and just think of that pitcher in my mind. I'm trying to replicate that pitcher. So I do that a few times. So I'd go like this. I'd go, okay, there's the pitcher. Okay. And then I would just hit a little pitch shot. And I just kept doing that every day over and over, over and over. So you got to imagine a shag bag holds 90 balls. So I would do full swings with a pitching wedge, let's say. So I'd hit the shots. So then 90, I'd do 90 of these right here, 90, there it is, there's the angle. And then I'd just hit the shot. So I did 90 of those, but I would do that hours and hours and hours throughout the day. So I'd go one way and then I'd come back the other way, go one way, come back the other day, other way. So I just kept doing that. So it was, uh, you know, it was a lot of repetition. It was having a great mental image in my mind that was, you know, something that I could use as a guide to get the angle. So I just kept sitting there going, okay, there's that picture. Okay. Go to the top. There's that picture. So, you know, working on lag is, you know, it's difficult. So <laughs> if I can at least give you or explain the way I got it many years ago, then hopefully it helps you too. All right. So try to have that visualization of Chick Harbert. <laughs> okay. Pretty cool image there. Maybe that, or you can even just think of what I'm doing right here. Just mentally think of that picture. Okay. And like I say, it's just setting that angle. Okay. It's maintaining the maximum hinge angle and then getting it still maintained as long as you can in the downswing. Okay, and then don't even worry about it when you hit shots. I guess that's kind of what I was getting at. I repeated it so much. I didn't think about it when I hit actual golf balls. I just did it in the practice swings. And then it just went into my real swing. All right, I wasn't sitting there hitting shots thinking of that angle. I just did that in lots of practice swings. So if you don't know, the secret to getting lag in your golf swing is to unlock your wrist joint. So you're holding on securely, but your wrists are loose right here. So you got to have loose wrists. So you can't even do this unless your wrists are loose. Okay. So if you, if your wrists were locked up, you'd be kind of going like that. So I'm not doing that. I just trained myself to go like that. All right. So. Like I said, keep that image in mind. Hopefully that will allow you to get into the same position. And then, like I said, we're going to do a third drill. Very important. So stay tuned for that one. Make sure. And like I said in the very beginning, if you didn't see tip number one and two, then just go up here. Okay. Right here. Click on that little uh, icon in the top corner, and then you'll see the other tip right there. Okay. So start with tip one and then go to two and now this would be the third tip, which is drill number two. I truly hope you've enjoyed this tip. You know, I've been teaching a powerful, effortless, pain-free golf swing now since 1991. If you'd like to learn this type of swing, then head on over to bodyswing.com slash free samples. Click the link up here or in the description below, and I'll send you some free samples of my body swing book and video series that take you step by step by step through how to build a powerful, effortless, pain-free golf swing. So once again, head on over to bodyswing.com slash free samples. Click the link up here or in the description below, and I'll send you the free samples right away.